Hello, and welcome to today's edition of the Megacast. My name is Dave Scott. Tyler Keefe is behind the scenes right now putting together <laughs> our, our Megacast. There's a lot of buttons you got to hit to get the Megacast on the air. And it's getting more complicated each and every day as the Megacast grows. If you are watching, thank you very much for joining us. We are at our Civic Center TV Lakes FM radio studios. We'll talk more about that in a minute. If you are not just joining us and maybe a new listener, one of our many new radio stations, thank you very much. Well, we got a lot to set up here for the new folks tuning in each and every day. First of all, let's say hello to 89.3. WBLD Lakes FM in the West Bloomfield area. Let's say hello to 88.1 WBFH, the BIF in the Bloomfield and Birmingham area. And let's say hello for the first time to WAHS 89.5 in Avondale, in uh, Avondale, Auburn Hills. And, and uh, as all of our community radio stations go, that one is the mothership. We, <laughs> we really appreciate WAHS 89.5 in Avondale for joining us today on the Megacast and days going forward. Huge signal covers an awful lot of Oakland County and a big chunk of Macomb County. So we are here. The Megacast cast it's a mega cast it's not a, a radio broadcast it's not a simulcast with TV it's a mega cast because it's all over the place mega cast in all media we do it from a radio studio but the mega cast is on these three radio stations it's on Civic Center TV in the uh, Bloomfield West Bloomfield area channel 15 Comcast channel 99 at and more TV stations coming over the next couple of weeks by the way you can watch the show anywhere at Civic Center TV.com that's our website we've got a ton of additional information there if you're watching right now it looks an awful lot like that and we'll, we'll get into more of the details of what is there for you at civiccentertv.com but not the least of which is our live video stream so you can watch the program today and see all that's going on and uh and then we have a facebook partner every uh every show and today we are streaming live facebook live on the uh, website or on the facebook page i should say of uh, the West Bloomfield Police Department. So we thank them for tuning in. So thank you for being with us. By the way, our telephone number, if you have any thoughts or comments, 248-683-2343, 248-683-2343. Again, uh, nice to meet you. Hi, everybody. If you're watching, I'm Dave Scott. Tyler Keefe will be checking in in a couple of minutes. Tyler Keefe is an alum of uh, Bloomfield Hills Schools. I'm an alum of West Bloomfield. So Tyler worked at the BIF. I worked at Lakes FM. And then we are so Glad, and today we will meet Logan, who's a senior at Avondale High School and helped us get on the air today in WAHS. So uh, all of that going on here. Now, we have a very busy program. If you have not uh, been with us, what this show is about, you've got CNN and the national networks. You've got our great local Detroit television stations and radio outlets and print outlets. But this show is here to give you a very in-depth look at what's going on with the coronavirus issue right here in our own communities. And uh, for the most part, and I know it's grown a little bit, but that means it started with West Bloomfield and then Birmingham, Bloomfield Hills. And now the enormous area covered by uh, WHS 89.5 Amadale Community Radio that includes Birmingham, all that area, a bunch of area to the north and off to the east. So uh, we are going to do our very best to cover these um, issues that are impacting us from a very local perspective, primarily an Oakland County perspective. Um, today on the show, and it's been changing quickly because uh, the news and events of the day have been changing quickly. Uh, at 1030, at 1030, if you're with us live, and this show does repeat, I should say, on many of our stations throughout the day. 1030, we're going to do our very best to tune in to the media conference being held by Governor Whitmer. Governor Whitmer is going to talk today about the 70-day emergency order, the extension of the emergency order. Caught a lot of people by shock taking that to 70 days. And uh, the big news we're expecting today and education folks all around our area are going to be tuning in to see what the governor says about education. It's speculated that uh, school is going to be closed for a longer period of time and there's going to be some other alternatives to how we can get education going over the summer and maybe even an early start to next year. So Governor Whitmer is here live on the Megacast at 1030. Keep an eye on our clock. That won't be too long from now. 
Uh, Sheriff Mike Bouchard, Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard. We're going to try to talk to him, probably not get to him today, but we'll talk to him tomorrow. He's doing something very interesting today, very local again for all of our friends in Oakland County. Uh, your phone may ring today at 430, and I don't know how the sheriff has your phone number, but, <laughs> you know, sheriffs have a way of having phone numbers, right? So the sheriff is going to call you at 430. You don't need to call anybody. There's, It's going to be like a robocall, but as a po- and from what I understand, and we're trying to get all the details but from what i understand it's going to be a robo call but uh you're going to get the call but it's not going to be a recording and those things you know let's be honest they get a little annoying even when they're helpful but today it's going to be really helpful very cool i've never heard of this at all a lot of innovation coming from sheriff bouchard in oakland county this call is going to be a call comes to you 4 30 pick the phone up Definitely pick the phone up. It's not going to be some, you know, spam call like we get all the time on our cell phones. Pick it up, and on the other end of the line is going to be um, a conference call with uh, the sheriff sharing a lot of very interesting local information. I don't know, but I assume there might be an opportunity for you to interact and get more information, and uh, we'll find out all about that. So that is going to be happening later on this afternoon. Watch for that phone call at 430 to folks in Oakland County and do answer your phone. Then another really huge thing, another informative uh, piece for you today other than our broadcast, uh, the governor will get back before the people of Michigan uh, with a very interesting, unique event put together by our Detroit area TV stations. And I'm looking at my notes here, so forgive me if you're watching for not looking right at the camera. But uh, from what I understand, all the TV stations, the commercial TV stations and uh, Detroit Public Television are producing this program together and all of us wanted to keep our space right now as i understand it uh, this is going to originate from multiple studios the governor will be uh taking questions on the town hall from uh her office i assume in lansing and uh and it's all going to go on at seven o'clock tonight so you could tune in to almost any local tv station around seven o'clock tonight and you should be able to see that so a lot of information coming from the governor getting right to us today and it couldn't be at a more pivotal time the news we've seen over the last couple of days uh about the impact of the coronavirus in michigan the national reports i i I know you are seeing what i'm seeing but we're watching the national reports say that uh Michigan is right in the center of this, and uh, we are one of the key states where the coronavirus is expanding more in a more prolific way than it is almost anywhere else. So uh, we will uh, we will look forward to he- forward to hearing what the governor has to say, what we can do to flatten the curve here in Michigan, and hopefully uh, begin to get this thing under control. Business people, I think including the Michigan Chamber of Commerce and others, have already come out and say, wait, are you kidding, 70 days? So I think this order that she's been talking about and what we've been hearing about gives the governor opportunity to uh, to make things continue to happen with legislative approval over 70 days. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see how it all shakes out. So uh, Tyler's here. We'll check in with him in a minute. But the rundown that we have, it's uh, very fluid here today we Tyler we had a plan for our broadcast and it just kind of all went out the window 10 30 we're expecting to hear from the governor after that we expect to hear uh, from one of our local education folks probably Dr. Hill and to hear more about what uh, po- folks in our area think about what the governor said from an education standpoint we're also going to hear later on in the show from Representative Ryan Berman 39th District Michigan House of Representatives he will join us via Zoom for those of you that are watching and uh, we will uh, we'll hear what he has to say about uh, what the legislature may be doing uh, with regard to the comments that are coming out of the governor uh, we're going to talk to dr melanie schwartz in just a couple of minutes she is a uh, psychologist and how is all of this impacting us uh, I, I we only have a couple of minutes to chat with her but i do want to check in with her because I can tell you that my head was really messed up yesterday. I mean, Tyler, I thought I had the coronavirus. Um, I'm feeling perfect. I actually feel better today than I have in weeks. So thank goodness. I think I'm okay. But, uh, you know, you really can watch. It's And I went home last night again. I'm feeling pretty good. It's so depressing watching. I, I'm sorry. I just got to call it the it way is. it is. It's so depressing watching the national news. It really is. And uh, just this whole situation is definitely taking a psychological toll. It definitely messes with you. Um, I found myself to be 
way more tired than I normally am. I'm getting more, <laughs> I, I think I'm getting as much or more sleep than I normally am. But like, it's also those little things like, uh, you know, you wake up and you're not feeling as great and you're like, oh no, is this... Yeah, oncoming coronavirus. Well, you have all, the sniffles, and you're, we, you have right. the sniffles, or you're sneezing, or you're coughing, and you're thinking, "Oh no, how did I get it?" And, yeah. and even if it's not what that, even if it's not COVID nineteen, so it's definitely, uh, it's definitely messing with people. It would be good to talk to her about how to kind of work through that. All right, so we'll get it. We'll get a comment from her. And the medical officials say, if you're not sure, call the county, call your doctor, call the hospital. Don't go. Call because. You know, I think the last place any of us really want to be right now, if we are not sure we are very, very sick, is is around a bunch of people that have the coronavirus. So we're going to take a very quick break. We'll be right back. We're going to check in on some of the assets available on our website. Uh, once again, reintroduce the new people that are tuning in and saying, hey, what, what is this? What am I listening to? Who are these guys? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll say hello again, and then we're going to check in with Dr. Melanie Schwartz. Uh, stay right here. We will have the governor's press conference conference in its entirety at 10:30 today and then reaction from uh one local school superintendent if not more as to what they think about it and then our own local representative ryan berman checking in as well you are listening to and watching the mega cast all around oakland county thank you very much for tuning in on civic center tv channel 15 and channel 99 on civiccentertv.com a lot of other communities have us on their website the west bloomfield police department has us on their facebook page today we really appreciate that and we are all over the radio. I am so proud of our community radio stations all coming together. We are on WAHS 89.5 in Avondale. Thank you, Logan, for making that happen. 88.1 WBFH, the Biff in Bloomfield and Birmingham. Thank you, Ron, for making that happen and right here uh, in the studio that we're at today, 89.3 Lakes FM. Tyler and I will be back in just a moment. To buy your home, you became a house hunting ace. Learned about loans, scoured neighborhoods, and asked the right questions. Now you're queen of your castle. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll feel empowered to own your retirement like you own your home. Go to aceyourretirement.org. Because when it comes to clearing financial hurdles, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Welcome to the Megacast. I'm Dave Scott. He is Tyler Keith, Bloomfield Hills alum, Dave Scott West Bloomfield alum. We thank you very much for tuning in to the Megacast from our Lakes FM studios in West Bloomfield. Also tuning in today are many of you listening to 88.1 WBFH, The Biff, and WAHS 89.5 Avondale. I can't thank these community radio stations for coming together. These are school radio stations and the students are out right now but still we have uh, a staff and students getting these radio stations all connected it, it isn't easy tyler i know you've been working hard to get all these signals connected we got we're doing it we're, we're macgyvering it right now let's be honest but we'll get it all worked out and better in the coming days but we had to get the stuff on the air so thank you tyler for doing what you're doing and thank you very thank much you. to our radio Welcome. stations for making it happen uh if you're new to the broadcast you can watch all this at civiccentertv.com there you will find an amazing website we got about five people working on this thing every day lots of of information and stories and you can go see it right now uh information from the sba information on announcements information from the chamber information from the governor uh oakland county assets and a whole lot more uh so you could check that out it is civiccentertv.com our coronavirus page and we have our local municipalities uh links to their important information you can also go to the megacast page which has uh repeats of uh, our programs and archives of all of our interviews and more information about our radio stations we'll get the wahs information up there today and then we have a new feature here actually it's not new it's been here since we started the broadcast a couple of weeks ago but new to many of you who've not been tuning in it's called the carryout club and the carryout club is a listing of restaurants all around our area now that we've added the wahs 89.5 avondale signal we'll get some more uh, restaurants in here but these are places that you can go to support restaurateurs in your community that are doing everything they can to keep their businesses alive we got a complete listing of restaurants that are open there's also an app on there that you can add to your restaurant website that will set up a and it's a free app temporarily that you can set up online ordering if you don't have it it's the carryout club and we invite you to go there and support the local businesses and restaurants in our area 
Joining us right now via Zoom, and if you're new to the show, we have a lot of guests come in via Zoom so we can see them and hear them, is Dr. Melanie Schwartz of Viewpoint Psychology and Wellness. And uh, Dr. Schwartz, thank you very much for joining us again on the Megacast. Thank you. So, of course. You know, my head's kind of messed up, Dr. Schwartz. i got to be honest with you. So, I mean, I wasn't feeling too bad. I had like a little headache yesterday. Probably wasn't sleeping enough. I mean, I feel great today. It, it, I don't uh-huh. I don't think it was a coronavirus related uh, issue. I really mm-hmm. didn't have the rest of the symptoms, but the slightest thing goes wrong and you know you're you're looking at your mortality. It messes with your yes. head. Uh, it is I, I, I'm sure I'm not alone. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, well, I think that's happening to a lot of us right now. Uh, the paranoia is starting to kick in because we're watching all the newscasts. You're not necessarily hearing about any of the positive cases and everyone being okay. You're only hearing about the people dying, um, hearing about all the symptoms repeatedly. And there's so many symptoms and so many different presentations that we're beginning to all think that we have it. So one of the things that I would recommend is when you're starting to have some anxiety about it, take a deep breath, think about it, think about the reality of the situation. Unless you are having a fever, unless you are coughing significantly and unless you are short of breath you're probably okay right now and tell yourself that that's what's important give yourself a reality check instead of kind of going on the anxiety roller coaster that's going to take you to worst case scenario yeah dr schwartz you know I, some of my friends had to pull me back back down to reality yesterday and i mm-hmm. talked to some family and friends you know that was really helpful it uh it did help and yeah, look i'm doing fine today and yes we we might all let <laughs> I me mean, we i'm no doctor we might all be infected but but even right. if we are, we're not going to rush off mm-hmm. to the emergency room unless we're we can't breathe and we have some of the other major right. symptoms that you were talking about. So yes. I, I think it's really good advice. What else are you telling folks right now who are coming in? What kind of trouble are people facing? And, and generally, what are you telling folks right now? Well, the anxiety and depression are really starting to rise um, specific, in my clients, at least. Um, we're getting a lot of new clients coming in as well with with severe anxiety. Um we're telling them what I just told you, in addition to what we talked about last week, creating a structure for yourself, getting outside, making sure you're connecting with your community, with your friends, staying in touch, uh, making sure you're getting enough sleep, making sure you're, you're doing your work, you're eating, you're doing things that you have control over. That's what's going to keep the anxiety down. Making, there's so little that we have control over right now, making sure you can, can control the things that you do have control over. Yeah, that's and, what's gonna that's what's gonna help right now. And we had one of our guests yesterday say, you know, we need to stay physically separated from people right now. That's yes. no question. But mm-hmm. we don't need to stay emotionally separated. We don't need to cut off communication. No. And and uh, I think it's even more important now than ever to communicate. Yes, absolutely. It and and it's so easy at this point. You know, I mean, years ago, obviously, none of us would have been able to do that. But now with all of the technology and FaceTime and Zoom and Skype and all the other um, ways that you can do it, it makes it so easy. And it's so important every day to stay in touch with family and friends right now. Are you talking to people electronically? Are you holding sessions with folks over uh, this electronic media? How's that going? I am. I I use a HIPAA compliant uh, platform um doxy.me or doxy.com um and that's how i've been doing it with the video platform i do have some clients that just want to talk on the phone which is fine as well um whatever they're comfortable with but i am i am very busy my yeah. clients are are needing me more than ever right now well thank you for doing what you're doing it certainly we mm-hmm. we we massively applaud the doctors i mean just think of the brave docs and nurses and and support oh, people yes. that are working in the hospitals Absolutely. i mean they are make they, it's like a it's a war they are working in a war zone what well how do you think i mean do you have any clients who are physicians or doctors or, or how do you think they're coping with all this um i personally right now do not have any doctors or nurses who are clients we have reached out to them i do have friends who are who are doctors and they are struggling their anxiety is sky high um a lot of panic, a lot of um, almost PTSD symptoms are, are kind of starting to settle in. It's very scary for them, not knowing what they're walking into every day, but you know, they're doctors, they want to be able to help, they want to be able to do what they can do to help everybody that's suffering, but at the same time, it, it's, it's, 
extremely scary for them and their emotions and they don't know how to cope with it. So we've reached out. We are willing to help whoever we can in the medical field right now. Who needs well, it. you're doing you're doing a great job. And I know that uh, that that it extends not to just folks uh, that that it it's physicians, too. They're they're definitely going to mm-hmm. need help and the nurses and all the people. Dr. Yes. Melanie Schwartz is joining us from Viewpoint Psychology and Wellness. Dr. Schwartz, we got so much good feedback after you were on last time. We want to just keep in touch with you. Thank I you. think you're really helping people out a lot. We only got a minute or two left. Uh, it's I, I think it's even uh, more challenging for us now to watch the national news and see the yes. map and see that Michigan is right in the bullseye. You know, you mm-hmm. turn on CNN and you see Henry Ford Hospital <laughs> and Beaumont and our yes. other ho- I mean, it, it, that makes it pretty hard Very for us, scary. huh? It is. Mm-hmm. So, so yes, um, absolutely. Do you have any final thoughts and words for folks? Because we got we got to get to the governor. Just yes. any final absolutely. recommendations for people that are, are listening and watching today? Limit the amount that you are are looking at social media. You're watching the news. You're going on the internet. Limit it because it is overwhelming and it is very triggering. And that's your own self care is to make sure that you limit that and you're not watching that all day because it is consuming. And that's not healthy for us to think about that all day long. No, I don't think it is. Well, I, I would suggest mm-hmm. that maybe the best thing to do in that regard is just don't watch any other media and just listen to and watch the mega cast, right? I mean, that'll Sounds cover that. What do you yes. think? Would you prescribe that to our? <laughs> Sounds uh, great. All right. And then uh, I do have one more question. Kids, what do we tell our kids right now? How do we handle this with our kids? Kids are actually more resilient than we think. We want to protect them. Um, that's our natural instinct, but we, they prefer to have information. We don't have to give them all the information, just give them basic facts and let them ask questions and be there to answer their, their, their questions. And at the same time, just be there to support their emotions that come with it, but they can handle it much more than we think that they can. So trust that, let them ask the questions and give them the information that they need. All right, Dr. Schwartz, thank you very much. Great mm-hmm. advice. Good to talk to you. We appreciate uh, you taking time to get Zoomed up with us. And I'm really glad we didn't get Zoom bombed during our, uh, that, yeah. that's the big thing, getting Zoom bombed right now. So that didn't, that didn't uh-huh. happen at all. Thank you very much. We're all going right. to go see what the governor has to say. And uh, Sounds good. I'm sure we'll chat with you again real soon. Okay, great. All right, she is Dr. Melanie Schwartz. We really appreciate her taking time to do a really good job, Tyler, helping us keep our heads screwed on straight through this whole thing. Uh, We got to zip to a break. Uh, Anything you want to add before we go to the break? No, I thought that she put it greatly that we need to just only take in as much news as we really need to take in in order to uh, get our our information and try to avoid getting too much of it because it is overwhelming. All right, this is the Megacast. He is Tyler Keefe. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> He's on his cell phone making everything happen. A lot of details here. And uh, you should know that we're doing this without a big staff. I mean, we, it takes 10 people to put this show together, but they're scattered all over Metro Detroit. Everyone working for their homes. Tyler and I and one other engineer are here in the building, and that's it. So uh, doing our part to get this information out to you. Coming up in a couple of minutes, hopefully this all work out well. We'll hear the governor's press conference scheduled for 1030 Eastern. For those of you that are uh, listening to the archive, you'll hear that in a minute. After that, we check in with Representative Ryan Berman of the 39th District, and we check in with Superintendent of the West Bloomfield Schools, Dr. Jerry Hill. Tomorrow, we are going to talk to Dr. Schwartz from uh, Auburn Hills, from the Avondale School District in Auburn Hills, for Forgive me. And uh, it is their radio station that is now with us. We'll have an, an extensive interview with him and find out how things are going in that school district and uh, just continue to salute the schools in our area. They are just such great pillars in our local communities, providing continuing ed- education, uh, supporting their huge staffs, and feeding many of the people that have no other place to go to get food other than our school districts. We're going to take a quick break and be back with the Governor's Conference. I'm Dave Scott. This is the Megacast. You are listening on the radio. You are watching on Civic Center TV, civiccentertv.com, and our radio stations today. Huge salute and thank you to WAHS 89.5 Avondale, 88.1 WBFH, the Biff, and right here on 89.3 Lakes FM, back in a moment. Welcome back to the Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. It's like she owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. 
The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. To buy your home, you became a house hunting ace. Learned about loans, scoured neighborhoods, and asked the right questions. Now you're queen of your castle. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll feel empowered to own your retirement like you own your home. Go to aceyourretirement.org. Because when it comes to clearing financial hurdles, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. There are many sounds in your daily life. Ones that make you smile. <laughs> ones that help you relax. And there are some sounds that can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you critical information about emergencies in your area. With updates from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know wherever you are. Learn more at ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Megacast. Dave Scott, Tyler Keefe here in our Lakes FM studios in West Bloomfield. We thank you for tuning in wherever you happen to be all around the area. The Megacast is growing bigger each and every day. And, of course, if you want to watch, you can go to civiccentertv.com. Again, civiccentertv.com. And uh, listen on our great radio stations growing by the minute. 89.3 Lakes FM, 88.1 WBFH, The Biff. And now WAHS 89.5 Avondale. We're going to talk to Logan. Logan is a senior at uh, Avondale High School. He runs a radio station. Kind of sounds like me when I was a kid, Tyler. And uh, he he's doing a great job over there. We're on the air. Everything's working out okay over there? All right, good. i got to get your mic yeah, on. We are on okay. here on, all, all, on right. all of our outlets. So you can just tune up and down the dial. If you're in the right area, you right. can probably hear all three of us. So uh, thank you so much to our radio stations. I've just got the signal punched in there. That is uh, coming from Lansing. So if you're watching, you got the, the, the signal that will be here in a couple of moments with the governor's press conference today at 1030. We will take that for you in its entirety here. Um, also, of course, today, big day for us here locally in that Mike Bouchard, the Oakland County Sheriff, is going to do a call at 430 today and your phone is just going to ring. This is the craziest thing. Your phone is just going to ring. You pick it up, and then, boom, you are right there. It's not one of those robocalls, hey, we're trying to sell you, sell you some swamp land in Florida. It's actually uh, a helpful call from the sheriff. He's going to reach out to however he gets all of our numbers, and then you can tune in. Now, we are trying to get permission to broadcast that live on as many of these outlets as we can. So if you don't get the call and you still want to hear, we're, we're working on that. I know you're, you're trying to work on that behind the scenes, right? Yeah. We're right. working on that. Okay. Uh, we are also going to talk uh, to Superintendent Jerry Hill of the West Bloomfield Schools after we hear from the governor. Governor is expected today to talk about the 70 day emergency order, uh, what's going to happen with schools and closings and early starts and late starts and all that. I, you've seen the speculation around the media. We'll let her speak for herself, and then we'll get a, a local reaction from one of our school superintendents. Really looking forward tomorrow to meeting and speaking with Dr. Jim Schwartz. Uh, the uh, superintendent of the Avondale schools uh, will get another really amazing superintendent. I've talked to him on the phone. It seems like a really great guy, Tyler. And uh, we look forward to hearing what's going on in the schools there. What we have heard from West Bloomfield, from Walled Lake, from Bloomfield Hills, is nothing short of spectacular. I mean, they're getting computers out to kids. Uh, there's a lot of learning going on. They're feeding people that need to be fed. And uh, I'm telling you, these school districts are really standing up in a crisis. They are. We, we have great school districts in the area that are doing remarkable things. Uh, e all together, I mean, kind of similar things they're doing, but they're also doing their own individual stuff that's been exceptional and innovative and put together really quickly, but still to the benefit of their staff, of their administration, and most importantly, to the students and families. Okay, so uh, we are waiting for the governor's press conference. I'm surprised we don't have video. It's like 30 seconds away. We'll wait and see. Hopefully that will show up here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, TV stations in Metro Detroit all getting together. You might want to tune in tonight at 7 o'clock and Channel 2, Channel 4, Channel 7, uh, even all the Channel Maybe 20, yeah. uh, all of them, and Detroit Public Television are producing this event. The rest of the state is going to pick it up as well. It'll be a, a town hall with the governor. 
And uh, we're really looking forward to it, to all of that, and hopefully that is going to work out really well. Why don't we take a 30-second timeout that will give us a check to make sure that we have our signals all correct for this uh, media conference, and we will be right back. This is the Megacast. There are many sounds in your daily life, ones that make you smile, <laughs> ones that help you relax. And there are some sounds that can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts. Now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you critical information about emergencies in your area. With updates from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know wherever you are. Learn more at ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037, so he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman, something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right, but don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. All right, welcome back to the Megacast. Dave Scott, Tyler Keefe here on 89.3 Lakes FM, 88.1 WBFH, The Biff, WAHS 89.5 in Avondale, and on Civic Center TV. We want to thank the West Bloomfield Police Department for being a big part of the show today and allowing us to stream our broadcast on their Facebook page. You can also watch the broadcast today on CivicCenterTV.com in full high definition. We are also on the West Bloomfield Community website working with uh, other communities across our area to try to get uh, try to get the, the broadcast out and available to more people and a couple of other community television channels are hopefully going to be joining us later on in the show we are going to be talking to representative ryan berman of uh, the 39th district michigan house of representatives he'll be checking in via zoom after we hear from the governor today and to get his feedback and what the governor had to say and then we also expect to be talking to Dr. Jerry Hill of the West Bloomfield School District and get some feedback from him as well. So we're waiting for the governor's uh, media conference here. It is not yet started, uh, so we're keeping an eye on that. We kind of expected that to happen right around 1030, but it is, you know, these things don't always happen the way they're, they are planned, so either we don't have the right connection, which I, I'm sure we do, we'll keep an eye on it, or... Uh, or it is possible that they are uh, just they've rescheduled that or moved that to a slightly different time. So again, we're keeping an eye on that. The team's keeping an eye on that, and we will let you know as soon as we have more. Gives me a brief opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in the web, and we want to invite our new listeners and explain again what we are doing here. This program started about I don't know maybe a week, week and a half ago. And, uh, and this program is an opportunity for you locally to get the local information that you need to be able to, 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 to find out what's going on. We've been talking to uh, fire chiefs around our area, police chiefs around our area, uh, medical folks, and we've been getting really honest, straightforward thoughts. And then we've also been able to get perspective from them on what's going on like right here at home right in our own community uh we know that metro detroit is one of the most severely impacted areas in the country now and uh, the coronavirus is growing rapidly here in our area so it it's really presenting a challenge for everybody here we we know that's going on um but to find out exactly what's happening the challenges that are going on i mean how full are our hospitals how are our first responders responding? How's it going? Are they healthy? Are their crews able to make it in? What can we do 
to, uh, to, 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 to help out from our perspective? How can we get involved in this whole process? Those are the kinds of things that uh, we have been talking about here on the program, and we will continue to, uh, to do so over the next uh, couple of days. So, um, again, we're waiting for the governor's media conference, probably uh, going to be happening a little bit later than we originally had anticipated. Um, so while we are doing that and waiting, Tyler, do you have any new information that we did not have? No, I've looked. I went and researched uh, stations all over the state of Michigan who are still reporting 1030 a.m. is the, the beginning time. She has signed an executive order, and she's going to hold a press conference regarding that. Uh, that still was scheduled for 1030. They're she is usually so on time. They're I'm usually, really surprised. Usually, she's usually, the last <laughs> couple times, they've actually gone early. So yeah, maybe they're making kinda, up for it. Kind of surprised. Maybe there's some technical problem going on because we are seeing the bar. They, you know, I could show you on, on TV here if you're watching. That's what we're seeing right now. Thank you to our friends at uh, Click on Detroit who are making this available for us and for you. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. You know, while we are doing that, Tyler, uh, the website's got an awful lot of information, and I'm just going to go in here quick. And uh, if we hear some audio in the background from, uh, from, the, uh, from the governor's office, it should just pop in. But uh, we had uh, really uh, great information yesterday from a wide variety of, of uh, folks. One of the folks we had on the show yesterday was Joe Bauman. Joe is the uh, president of the Birmingham Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. He was talking about small businesses, and here is what he, part of what he had to say on the megacast yesterday. So these are very emotional times, especially for small business owners who have literally put their lives and their heart and souls into their business, and they're legitimately concerned whether they're going to be able to stay in business. Um, but we have to get past that initial emotion and really come at it more pragmatically, just like you would any major business or financial decision you make on behalf of your business and your employees. Really interesting to talk to Joe. He is really an impressive guy. He had a lot of very helpful information for us yesterday, including um, all the information that you would need if you're um, applying for uh, one of these small business loans across our area. We also yesterday talked to Chief Fitzgerald of the Kegel Harbor uh, Police Department, and he chimed in on the show. You know, in Kegel, it's going pretty well. Uh, I like to think that people are policing themselves. A lot of us didn't take it as, serious as, as seriously as we might have wanted to to begin with. Uh, I, I have to be one of those two that didn't, right off the bat, think it was that bad. Hey, another flu. But as they're put out numbers and, and it is affecting people seriously, I think I'm seeing more people following the rules that are put out there so the police department doesn't have to get involved in that. And that's the important thing is overall ju just take care of yourselves and do what you're supposed to do. Do Make, make good choices. As we, uh, we, as we received really sobering news over the past couple of days about the magnitude of the growth of the coronavirus in our area, it was our local officials that really were tipping us off at the very beginning and, and, and early in the game and letting us know that it's pretty severe out there. But it was really um, heartening, Tyler, to hear from uh, the fire chief in West Bloomfield and the fire chief in Bloomfield Hills to hear that in spite of the fact that um, that they're having a hard time out there. They're, they have so far, and they continue to be able to answer all the calls. And uh, although they've had to rethink some of the things they're doing, they are able to uh, answer all their calls and get people to the hospital. They were more concerned about uh, the hospitals having the capacity, and that's when yesterday we heard and the day before that there are some potential other locations here that uh, kind of like they've done at Cobo Hall in Oakland and some of the, the suburban communities that um, we might be able to utilize for additional hospital beds. The suburban show place was mentioned, some other facilities. But yesterday on uh, the Megacast, West Bloomfield Fire Chief Greg Flynn discussed how the West Bloomfield Fire Department is approaching incorporating changes into how they operate during this coronavirus pandemic. So we're definitely are rethinking the, the uh, approach on emotional health issues in the fire service uh, across our public safety, police, and EMS as well. And how do we engage with that? We know it's, it's taking a toll. They're working uh, long hours. We're seeing our attendance better than ever. Uh, the firefighters are showing up to work because they know that their community needs them and they're here. Uh, and then they have the added stress of what they take home and not just what they saw that day, but physically what can be on them. 
uh, on their clothes and the fear of, especially those with loved ones at home that are immunocompromised or uh, have uh, grandparents that take care of their kids on, the, on their days that they're working and then they go home and, and uh, potentially expose someone. While low, it's still an exposure. We also had a chance to talk to uh, Chief Moore, and I'm going to find his comment here in just a minute. It will take me a second. But uh, we were able to talk to Chief Moore in, in Bloomfield Hills and uh, get feedback from him. And he had all kinds of interesting information, including talking about some of the regional emergency resource management that's going on in our area. We're working with uh, divisional-type uh, command. Uh, they split the county up into five different divisions, and we're working together to try to uh, have concentrations of support where it's needed. Uh, as this thing uh, shifts and uh, the demand on the system, we want to be prepared so we can move both uh, fire and EMS resources to where they're needed the most. So if you're uh, new to the show, that's the kind of information that you're going to get. We're going to continue to talk to these folks live, uh, continue to bring you the most up-to-date local information that we can find, and uh, and, and that's what we're doing. We're still waking, waiting for Governor Whitmer to uh, check in uh, from Lansing. I believe that press conference was scheduled for 1030. Looks like it's going to be running a little bit late. Maybe we'll shift some things around here on the show. But we're going to give it uh, just a couple of more minutes and see if we can get an update on how things are going there. Uh, in the meantime, uh, thank you for tuning in to the Megacast. It's Tyler Keefe, hard at work over there. Are you keeping an eye on your phone for any updates? I, I am. I'm, I'm right. looking at all outlets locally. Okay. Well, we will find out as soon as we know something from Lansing. Uh, one of the things we've been doing on the show, it, it's been kind of fun and a little bit lighthearted. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's been a helpful way to communicate the uh, the things that you need to know during the coronavirus, the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus uh, outbreak. I don't have my sheet with the additional um, items on here, Tyler. But that being said, we have a COVID-19 vocabulary. So we've got a lot of new vocabulary, a lot of new uh, phrases, sayings that uh, – has slipped into the language, and they behind each and every single one of them, there's a message that is helpful. Uh, Tyler, let's go through what we have here in our list as of today, and I think I can remember the ones that aren't here. Uh, flatten the curve, flatten the curve. Hearing that an awful lot, what's that mean? Flattening the curve is the effort to reduce the exponential growth of number of COVID-19 cases uh, by many methods, such as uh, Physical distancing, there we go, instead of social distancing, um, covering your, ma- your mouth and making sure that you are uh, sneezing into your shoulder or sneezing into your elbow instead of your hands, and of course, washing your hands. Uh, social distancing. Social distancing is keeping a, a distance of about six p- feet from other people so as to not easily spread the disease person to person. Fomite transmission what fomite. what what is it sounds so official what is fomite it's a transmission? scientific term for uh, a carrier either a surface or a person that is able to transfer the virus to someone else usually by way of uh, their hands because they're touching their face and it, and either it go it is transmitted through their mouth their nose their eyes or their ears all right happy birthday song that's a song you're supposed to sing about two times at the very least while washing your hands for effective hand washing i i saw by the way on cnn and a lot of some of the national information is helpful some of it is just so depressing i can't watch it all the time uh but uh, i saw um dr sanjay gupta washing his hands and the way he did it i could show you on tv he's like scrapes his nails and goes between his fingers and i mean it just you i do that every time that. i mean it's not not just the time but right. just got to get all that stuff off there and yeah, soap it up good equally as important as the time is just getting the entire surface area of your hand when you're washing your hands because you no know, you can you can wash just you know the palm of your hands for 20 seconds and not get you know the side of your hands under your thumbs under your f- uh, nails in between your fingers, the top of your hands, uh, the beginning of your wrist areas, you know. There's just a lot you can miss by just rubbing your hands together with soap and water for 20 seconds and uh, not being thorough. By the way, I see you did add all the uh, new items here on my list. I didn't see them. So yeah. good. Nice job, Tyler. I Sorry I doubted you. Asymptomatic. Oh, okay. Asymptomatic. What's that? If someone's asymptomatic, they may be carrying the disease, the virus, but not be showing physical symptoms. Okay, pandemic. We we pretty much yeah. know this, but that's the outbreak. So a pandemic worldwide. is the spread of a disease that, that has sp- spanned worldwide. All right. Uh, these are things that we're seeing in the media a lot, too. During the COVID-19 crisis, uh, here's our COVID-19 vocabulary. Curbside testing. 
Uh, that is testing that is happening uh, at hospitals or at other areas that have been set up as medical facilities, uh, usually reserved for people who are COVID-19 suspected patients, where they can drive in, take a quick swab, and get their test done. We've not checked in on some of the curbside testing that's going on here lately, but uh, certainly making a lot of news late last week, and I assume up and running, is the testing at the Michigan State Fairgrounds in Detroit, where this whole problem has been uh, very much acute. Uh, some of the other hospitals are doing, I know Henry Ford, West Bloomfield, and others are doing testing outside the actual facilities, So, uh, which I think is brilliant because the last thing you want to do is go into a hospital it, it, and you might not have the coronavirus. And you go in and you get tested, and once you go in the hospital, your chances of getting it are a lot better than they would be if you stayed outside of the hospital. I don't If it was me, I'd much rather get tested in the parking lot. Yeah, and, and for the medical facilities, too, if you're testing someone, that means that they have gone to their primary care doctor by the phone. Uh, they've had their checkups either virtually or over the phone or uh, by having a conversation with their primary care doctor who has said, yeah, they may have COVID-19, you should get a test. But you don't want them taking up a hospital bed, taking up resources inside the hospital uh, or at a medical facility if they don't absolutely have to. So the curbside testing is very effective. All right. Abundance of caution. That is taking extra precautions to make sure you are not spreading the disease if you have it or putting yourself in a position where you may pick up the virus. So instead of having our whole staff here, they're all working at home and... And an abundance, abundance of caution. Yeah. Right. The stay-at-home order. That was ordered by the governor earlier in, Mar in March. Uh, not early in March. We're in April now. It was ordered in March that residents who don't absolutely need to be leaving their home for work or other activities stay at home as much as possible. All right. Much nicer way of saying that is a uh, – and much nicer to say that than a lockdown, yes. which we've oh, heard yes. quite a bit of from the cars. Uh, and then this is the most important of all. A new term, new to everybody. They haven't heard it before at all. The it's megacast. The megacast. Yeah, the megacast. It's not a broadcast. It's not a simulcast. It is a megacast. It is a large-scale broadcast of local news and information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic just for you out in the community. All right. So i tell you what. It, it's 1047. You have an update? I do have an update, Okay. Dave. This Go. is straight from WLNS-TV in Lansing. And that's the feed that we're that getting. That is the feed they're getting. They, yeah. they did tweet out about five minutes ago. Hello, viewers. We are having we are experiencing some technical difficulties loading Governor Whitmer's press conference. Thank you for waiting while we load the press conference regarding her update on K-12 through schools as it relates to COVID-19. Well, that was nice that you tweeted. See, isn't Twitter fantastic? Fantastic. So they're Indeed. only keeping 10 million people around the state waiting. With, I believe me, technical things oh can happen. I, 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 I know it. So, uh, did they say when we might have this? I've been keeping up on their Twitter, reloading constantly. They have not provided a, an update with a time. <laughs> you know, I listen. No one knows better than I. I won't go into why. But live streaming is sometimes a little bit difficult. So uh, I'm sure they'll get it all That's working true. and they'll uh, get it out to the state. And I don't know if you've noticed, but at my home, it, it, right here in Oakland County, uh, the internet can get kind of jammed up with everybody zooming and skyping and streaming, and then you know a lot of kids are at home right now and they are uh, enjoying gaming and watching TV and more and more of that stuff is just going over the open public internet. So I get it, I get it. We'll be patient, and see what happens here. Uh, well, listen, we can uh, continue to stay. I, I I have a couple other guests, but I, I really wanted to hear from them after. We heard from the governor. I don't know if we're going to be able to squeeze all that in with the schedule that we have now. Uh, but let's give this just a minute or two more. We'll see if they get it together, and then uh, hopefully we'll get that uh, broadcast to you. If not, we will uh, just move forward. Again, uh, I'm Dave Scott. He's Tyler Keefe. We thank you for joining us. This is the Megacast. Uh, we are sitting, if you're watching, in the Lakes FM radio studios on Walnut Lake Road in West Bloomfield. That's where this started. Uh, we have put some TV cameras here in our radio studio so we can put this on TV and stream it. It's a radio show, not a TV show, so thank you for understanding that. And um, let's see. So then it, it just kind of grew. And we called uh, your alma mater, Bloomfield Hills, and yeah. talked to Ron out there. And 89.3 The Lakes FM was joined by 88.1 WBFH The Biff. And that's where we're on there now. And then today we are so ha happy... <clears throat> 
to be joined. I'm getting choked up. I'm so happy about it, oh, Tyler. So am I. So, so happy to be joined by WAHS 89.5 in Avondale, their community radio station. In fact, you know what? we got a minute. Why don't we take a quick break, and let's see if we can get Logan uh, who is a high school senior at Avondale High School, and just chat with him and say hello to him on the radio. So uh, let's right take a quick break. We'll do that again. Coming up, the Governor's Media Conference, as soon as we hear it. Sounds like it might have been recorded, but uh, we'll hear that in a couple of minutes. Don't forget that uh, Sheriff Mike Bouchard, later on today at 430, will have a robocall. It'll be a live call. Your phone's going to ring at 430 today. They advise you to pick it up to get additional information tonight at 7 o'clock on all of our TV stations. They are all cooperating with a, I don't know how they're going to connect their studio. Hopefully, hopefully Tyler, they can do better with their connection than the connection from Lansing It's a great right warm-up for tonight at the very yeah, least for yeah. the technical teams. Yeah, hopefully Working very work. hard. But, you know, nobody, we don't want to get people together for a town hall. That would be counter to everything that's going on right now. So, uh, tonight, Channel 2, Channel 4, Channel 7, uh, Channel 20, 62 all, also. Channel 62, yeah. and the other channel, with, yeah, I don't even know them all anymore. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, the incredible Detroit Public Television will all be linked together, and uh, and then they're going to link up to Lansing. Hopefully, it's going to go better than what we're waiting for right now. And uh, all that is going to happen, and then it's going to be an hour-long town hall with the governor. And I think you're going to have some opportunity to ask some questions tonight. We will find out. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You, you are watching and listening to the Megacast on WAHS 89.5 Avondale, 88.1 WBFH The Biff, 89.3 Lakes FM, Civic Center. TV, West Bloomfield Township uh, Police Department. We thank you for joining us as well today, and we will be right back. We're here early before they wake up. We stay late. We stay informed. We invest in the latest technology. We take the time to train the next generation of doctors and nurses. We work together to make sure we heal their bodies and their minds. We do this not because it's our job, but because this is about our veterans' lives. This is our mission. More than 300,000 of us working as one, together with families and loved ones. No matter where they live in this country, we'll be there. We all come together and stand together to serve our veterans. We stand strong, united. Stand with us in caring for our veterans. 89.3 Lakes FM, 88.1 WBFH, The Biff, WAHS, 89.5 Civic Center TV in West Bloomfield and uh, the Bloomfield area. And, uh, of course, we are uh, on many other places. We think all of you have posted our media. Uh, our social media guy, Jake, is just doing an amazing job spreading this all over the Internet. We really appreciate it. And uh, speaking about people that are doing a really good job, joining us on the line now is Avondale High School senior Logan Pizzuro. Logan, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Logan, how you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So what a massive uh, job you did. Thank you so much, um, <laughs> you know, for getting us hooked up. And, and, uh, and I just want to say thank you to you, to Superintendent Jim Schwartz, to your teacher, Kim, and to everybody at WHS 89.5 in Avondale Community Radio for uh, picking up the Megacast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's no problem. Thank you for... Joey, or for having this make cast and having it so everyone can get the information they need. Well, we're doing the very best we can. So you are a senior. You're, uh, you're, you're I'm a junior, oh, actually. You're, you're, oh, you're, I elevated you. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> hopefully when we hear from the governor here in a couple of minutes, she's going to make it easy for you to transition from junior to senior. Uh, yes. You, you're, you're obviously pretty astute because you're, you got us on the air today. So thank you very <laughs> much. Um, Quick plug for your radio station. Tell people about uh, your radio program at Avondale High School and WAHS Radio. Yeah, well, so we're WAHS 89.5 on your FM dial, and uh, we we just play a very uh, large range of music from uh, classic rock, which is what I'm well-versed in, to pop music, to jazz, to uh, lo-fi, to dubstep. We just have a very wide uh, you know, selection of music, and it all plays at different times. And um, 
We actually have our website, wahsradio.org, and there you can see our music schedule. You can catch our live stream online if you're not by radio, and uh, you can see a bunch of information on our station, see the faces of our DJs behind the mics, and a lot of other stuff. Excellent. Well, we will make a link from our stuff to your stuff, and if you want to link back, that would be great. But, you know, hey, well done. You're a junior in high school, and uh, very well done on the radio. I appreciate it. Thank you for everything that you're doing. You guys have a great radio station with a huge signal. Your station is uh, very powerful as high school radio stations go, and and that's why we are so appreciative of you uh, allowing us to join your broadcast schedule and all the great things that are they're going on over there. So, and I know you've got to put an effort in every day to make this happen. Um, so, uh, again, I thank you, and let's keep you involved in the broadcast and anything that you want to contribute to our broadcast. You are more than welcome to do so at any time, all right? All right, sounds good. So tell me, you're a high school student. Um, you know, Can you talk a little bit about how it's going with uh, school being out and how that's all working? Well, um, it's it's been a change that we got to get used to for sure. Um, we've my school has decided to go to uh, go on the online route, so we've been working a lot with Google Classroom, um, and we've been doing a lot of Zoom meetings. I've had so many Zoom meetings. I didn't even know what Zoom was before all of this, <laughs> but uh, it's it's definitely a big adjustment. You know, just not being able to socialize with friends is another big thing. So. It's it's definitely different. <laughs> well, you know, I know that could be really difficult. Uh, how are you hanging in there, and how are the other students doing? Are they doing okay? Um, well, I'm I'm doing all right. Um, other students, you know, I've been I've been able to talk with a lot of my friends hey, online. Logan, Logan, this happens in broadcasting. We somehow figured out how to get the governor's media conference, so we're going to go to that. Hang on, we'll come okay. to you afterwards. All right, Traveling ladies and gentlemen. Good. Finally, here is the governor from we Lansing. Know that. Michigan is one of those areas, and we're grateful for their partnership. Magnum Tools in Romulus is making countertop sneeze guards for businesses in the area to protect employees and patrons. Great Lakes Wine and Spirits is beginning working with local restaurants to send two meals a week home for their employees and their families. And High Velocity Sports in Canton will offer a drive through free lunch for anyone in need on weekdays. We are grateful that so many Michigan businesses are doing their part, large and small businesses alike. We've updated our numbers daily as of yesterday at 3 o'clock. We had 9,334 cases, 337 deaths. I think it's incumbent on every one of us to remember that each of those, each of those people was a Michigander with a story, with a family and friends who can't mourn them as we traditionally would, because we can't congregate. And it's important for us to remember this. This is what's at stake, Michigan lives. Michigan is a hotspot for COVID-19 cases. We're on the upswing. Our numbers continue to climb every day. We found nearly 3,000 more positive cases since I sat last in this chair on Monday. We know that the APEC probably not end April, beginning of May. We're a month will hit the height of this. I need to reiterate every time I address you that no one is immune from this virus. People of all ages and all walks of life are testing positive across our state every single day. This virus moves easily from person to person. Even if you don't feel sick, you could be carrying it. I was struck by one of the stories I saw on the news just this morning of a special education teacher who's 30 years old who passed away after three days of combating um, the symptoms of COVID-19. His wife had it as well and hardly had a fever. Each of us responds differently to this disease and that's why we all must act as though we could be carrying it and stay home. Just one person with this virus can infect another 40 and then in turn they can affect thousands more. We must do everything we can to protect our families, our communities, our dedicated health professionals, and everyone on the front line. COVID-19 will touch every one of our lives in some way or another, so we all must do our part. 
Today I'm signing an executive order to close school buildings to students for the remainder of the calendar year, the school calendar year. All in-person instruction for K-12 students will be suspended and all school buildings will be closed for the remainder of this school year. This doesn't mean our kids will stop learning. Each district must develop an alternative learning plan for students to continue their education during this time. Plans will be different based on district. The plans will be locally driven and reflect the best interests of the kids in their communities. That means learning by phone or mail or online. That means project-based learning and paper packets, telephone lessons, and things that can be used as means of alternative mode of delivering instruction. Districts must make sure that their plans are appropriate and accessible for families in their schools. If the plan relies on some online instruction, the district should ensure that every student has access to an appropriate device with an ability to connect to the internet. Students and families will not be punished if they are unable to participate in their alternate learning plan. My personal intent is to ensure and implore all districts to have a plan so that graduating seniors, this class of 2020, graduates on time. Our dedicated educators, teachers, secretaries, parapros, and custodial and cafeteria workers will be paid for the remainder of the school year. Now, I know this is hard, and I know that this raises a lot of questions, from parents to students. I was getting text messages from my own child before I came out here asking questions about how this is going to work. I know that there is a lot of anxiety about how we're going to move forward and meet the needs of our kids. I feel it too. As a parent of two high schoolers, both of whom are uh, going to miss out on prom this year and a senior who's asking the same questions about graduation, we feel it in our own household. But this is the best thing that we can do for the health of our children, for the tens of thousands of educators in Michigan who work in our schools. This will ensure more kids and educators will return to school happy and healthy at the start of next school year. It will protect more families from the spread of COVID-19, and it will help us return to life sooner. Over the past few weeks, we've seen teachers across our state step up and find creative ways to continue reaching their students. Like Mrs. Wilson in St. John's, who wrote letters to her sixth grade class to let them know she's thinking of them. And the teachers at Holland Public Schools who are providing meals to families, hosting Zoom calls, and sending notes to their students. Like my friend Mrs. Johnson, who's at Plymouth Canton. She's a kindergarten teacher, and she and her colleagues drove through neighborhoods waving at students. Took them two hours, but they wanted to make sure students knew that they were there for them. And like Lauren from Stony Creek, who has created a virtual band room with her students, setting up time for them to collaborate with professional mus musicians. And Nora in Detroit, who makes daily video lessons for her kids, while her husband Lane, a district chef, is helping provide meals for families who need them. Our teachers' number one priority from Detroit to Holland to the Upper Peninsula is ensuring a great education and a healthy learning environment for our kids. Now, I know this will be tough, and it will, it will require creativity and hard work and problem solving. But in my time in public service, I've met educators across our state who I know are eager to rise to this challenge. Our teachers are some of the hardest working people I know. I know that they will help guide our students through this tough time, and I will do everything in my power to support them and help guide them through this. I also want to take a moment to thank Michigan parents, parents who have spent every day with their kids, trying to keep them entertained and inspired, trying to keep them reading and working on math or science with them. You're listening to the MegaCast with the governor's presentation from Lansing at WAHS Avondale, Auburn Hills, WBFH Bloomfield Hills, and WBLD Orchard Lake. I know it's hard, and when your kids get over, they will remember these days when they got to spend a little more time with their parents. They'll remember the activities that you did together. They will be grateful, ultimately, that we all pulled together to meet their needs. 
I'm imploring you also to make sure that as you're engaging with your kids that you're educating them in an age-appropriate manner and how to, uh, how to learn about what is happening in our world right now and how to cope with it. These last few weeks have been tough for Michiganders. They've been tough for all Americans, but we know right here in Michigan we have got a big challenge. Our families, our workers, and all of our mental health has been stretched. This is a challenge unlike anything we've ever faced before. I know many of you tune in every week hoping for some good news, hoping I'll say something that shows we're ready to turn back to life as normal. I ask that until that day comes, you keep making smart choices. I ask that everyone who can volunteer in healthcare centers or donate blood or money to their local food bank or medical supplies, visit michigan.gov backslash fight COVID-19. Stay home, stay safe, and every day that you do, we will get one step closer to the end. I wanna thank the hardworking men and women in our grocery stores and the UFCW and Kroger and Meyer and the people that are making sure we've got food for our families. I wanna thank the janitorial services across the state that are cleaning all of these environments so that when we are out, we're safer. And I wanna thank the teachers and of course our nurses and doctors, respiratory therapists and everyone in our healthcare system. And with that, I wanna thank and turn it over to the person that I learned the most from, that I lean on the most, Dr. Janae Caldoun, our Chief Medical Executive. Thank you, Governor Whitmer. COVID-19 in Michigan continues to be a true public health crisis. We're not sure of the exact date when cases are going to peak in the state, but as of right now, we know we are still on the upslope. We've identified more than 1,000 new cases each day over the past few days. As of yesterday, as the governor mentioned, Michigan had 9,334 cases and 337 deaths. We expect to announce more cases and more deaths later today. We've talked a lot about our goals when it comes to the public health strategy in Michigan. We do not have a vaccine and we don't have an antiviral treatment. Because of that, social distancing is really the one thing we must do and do very well to get ahead of this virus. We must prevent as many people as possible from getting the disease. We must protect our residents who are most vulnerable to becoming very ill, the elderly and those who have underlying medical conditions. We also have to understand that no one is immune. There are people who are young. There are people who do not have underlying medical conditions who are getting sick and are dying. We must heed the governor's executive order to stay home and stay safe. People must stay home if they are sick. We have evidence that even if you feel well, you could still be spreading the disease to others. Do not leave your house unless you absolutely must and maintain social distancing while you are out. We also have to make sure our hospitals have the capacity to take care of the sick. We know that many of our hospitals on the front lines taking care of patients are at capacity right now. Intensive care units are full, hospitals are running low on masks and gowns, and if they have them, some are actually needing to reuse them between patients. We also know some hospitals are running low on critical medications like albuterol and sedation medications, medications that are necessary to help people breathe or to make sure they can be safely maintained on a ventilator while someone's body heals from the coronavirus. The state is working as hard as it can to support our hospitals. I've truly been humbled uh, by the number of people who have reached out to help us get masks or to volunteer their, their services. Our colleagues in the federal government have been listening and they've sent us some supplies, although we know it will not be enough. We will continue to work around the clock to get our hospitals the supplies that they need. We've also already identified the TCF Center in Detroit as a site for some patients who have COVID-19. Given the expected trajectory of COVID-19 in the state, we will likely need additional facilities. We will also need additional medical professionals, doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists, physician assistants, and others to staff them. Please, if you have the skills and you are available, go to our website www.michigan.gov slash 
fight COVID-19 to sign up. The next several weeks are going to be very difficult, some of the most difficult we've ever faced. I encourage everyone to take this seriously and to heed the governor's executive order to stay home and stay safe. And I'll turn it back over to you, Governor. Okay, with that, happy to open it up for some questions. Um, can you speak a little bit about how this decision was reached to close the schools? I know it's been several weeks that parents have been wondering when it was going to make a decision. So what was the deciding factor for you? All right, I know you've got a microphone, but I'm going to repeat questions. I've gotten feedback that it's hard for people to hear the questions. So the, how did we arrive at this decision on the school year? Not lightly, I'll tell you that. The decision to pull our kids out of school was made based in um, you know, communication with our chief medical executive as we saw COVID-19 starting to spread across the country. We know that schools are places where kids congregate, they bring things from home and then they bring things back home. And so it was important that we pull our kids out. We've seen other states take actions to curtail the school year, but we wanted to make sure that before we made any pronouncements, we had a plan. And it was a plan that took into account that we've got 1.5 million children in Michigan in our uh, pupil count, that we've got 56 ISDs across our state. We have over 900 school districts in the state of Michigan and each has their own set of assets and their own set of challenges. And that's precisely why when a pronouncement was made that we'd taken all of these things into consideration, talking with our Michigan Department of Education, talking with our uh, leaders in the legislature, both sides of the aisle, talking with our frontline educators um, who are the true experts here. This we think now is the right moment to say, here is how we uh, anticipate moving forward to meet the needs of our kids. This is how we are empowering school districts. This is how we are leaving some of the restrictive things that people were grappling with, how do we cope with this? And this is how we can, as a state, start to move forward on individualized plans for districts so that they have um, the tools they need to meet the kids that they serve. There are, um parents right now who are obviously home um, because they can't go because of the previous to work because of the previous executive orders but at some point what happens when you have all the students who are out of school because the school buildings are closed but parents now might be let back to 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 go to work how did that factor into your decision and what do you anticipate going forward for that well, at this juncture, we think we're probably a good month out from the apex of COVID-19. And this disease is spreading very fast here in Michigan. We still don't have enough tests to really have uh, confidence in that we know precisely how many people are carrying COVID-19. That's why we've had to take such aggressive steps to mitigate the spread of this. Uh, with regard to whether or not there's a lag between when parents get back to work and when kids are back in the classroom, that's a, that's a very real possibility. But at this point in time, our decisions have to be made uh, by centered with what is in the best interest of the health of our kids and our families and our teachers. And that's precisely why we think that this is the right step now. If perchance uh, it looks like the world can go back to normal uh, before the end of this calendar year, that would be a great issue that we would have to confront. But at this point in time, the most responsible thing we can do is to move forward to work with ISDs and local districts to fashion a plan that meets the needs of the kids that they serve. Governor, at least one of the legislature's Republican leaders has said that uh, um, they're not, he's not ready to agree to your request for an extension of the executive order. Just what are your thoughts on that and where do those discussions stand? Well, a couple things. You know, Michigan is um, on the front end of taking aggressive steps. That is the smartest thing that we can do when we finally see other states following suit. That's good. They're a little bit late to the science and to the, the tough decisions that executives need to be making. But the fact of the matter is we are nowhere near the end of COVID-19 in the state of Michigan. As we've stated, as you look at modeling, we know that we are in for a tough three, four, five, six weeks here in front of us. And so we are far from out of the emergency that we find ourselves in. We've got to retain every tool we can to combat COVID-19, to keep people safe. The legislature's um, insistence on coming in next week is something I implored them not to do. We've already lost a member of the legislature to suspected COVID-19. 
the person of the 110 member house has lost their lives already. I think that is very inadvisable for them to congregate and to, to start meeting. I think the best thing that we can do is to say this new order, we, they don't have to come back for at least 28 days, but let's make sure that when they do come back, we have an emergency extension for as long as 70 days if it's necessary. If it's not, great, but let's go the route that we need to to protect people. This um, emergency powers, are, are they've been used many times before. Not in a situation like this, I grant it, but in much less serious times, these emergency authorities have been um, extended much longer than 70 days. For a sinkhole, for instance, for the, the crisis in Flint, you know, this is a time where we have a unique crisis on our hands. People are dying in our state. It's important that we continue to have the protections for our healthcare workers, and that all depends on extending this emergency. And I ask that the legislature think very seriously about um, embracing this 70-day extension. It doesn't mean it's embracing a 70-day extension for every other order that I've issued. It simply means that we acknowledge that we are gonna be in this emergency and we're gonna to need to have uh, unique powers during this time to combat um, COVID-19 and to save lives. Um, going back to the school's topic, a lot of parents are confused about what this means in terms of advancing their kids for the next year or not. I know you said it was important to get those graduating seniors through as well. So can you uh, tell parents what their options are in terms of um, continuing this school year and then advancing to the next school year? Yes, yeah, so they will be working with their districts. Um, this does not mean, you know, what we want to make sure is that no student is penalized because of COVID-19 that they are not held back because of this global crisis that we're confronting. And that's precisely why we're encouraging districts to put together their distance learning plans so that they are meeting the needs, acknowledging some of the challenges within these school districts so that every student has um, the ability to move on to the next grade. We also need to recognize that there will be some challenges and some additional needs this fall when school is resumed. And that's precisely why working with the legislature on the terms of this is important because it lays the groundwork for the additional supports that we're going to need to give our kids as we think about resuming in the fall. You mentioned the fall and coming back. If districts have different plans, they have different access, so you could have a district where most people have access to online education, have pretty high performing district. You also have districts where there aren't the access just isn't there, whether it's rural or urban settings. Are you concerned about the gap that could be created in the next month or two and then expanding on that in the fall and what conversations need to be had about adjusting some of the standards yeah. for what third graders are supposed to know, what fifth graders are supposed to know when we ever we get back? Yeah, well, I appreciate the question. I mean, you're touching on precisely the challenge that we have with over 900 school districts across the state with 56 ISDs. We know that whether you are in um, one part of our state or another, it can be vastly different access to resources, to broadband, to um, all of the, the kind of different challenges that districts have. They're not uniform. That's precisely why I've been for two years in a row pushing an equitable formula in our education budget. We recognize that districts do not have equitable access to all of these things, and that's why it's not one size fits all. It's gotta be determined at the local level so that um, the needs of kids are met, acknowledging the unique challenges that districts are confronting in different parts of our state. Um, what are you thinking about in terms of a start date for the um, coming school year? Well, I think, Rick, it's, you know, we are making decisions right here and now based on the best science and the best data that we can get our hands on. We need more testing. We need to be doing robust testing in order to really assess when and how it's safe to resume life. And that includes what school looks like in the fall. Um, at this juncture, what we know is that it would be too dangerous to have our kids congregating in schools across the state right now. And that's going to be true for the foreseeable future. And that's why it is time to move forward with a distance learning plan for our children. Because we acknowledge if we don't hit our apex until 
late April or mid-May, the school year is pretty much over at that juncture, and that's why we can't wait to see what happens. We've got to start making plans to meet the needs of our kids. So far as what the fall looks like, um, I don't think that we can with any certainty say we need to start precisely on this day. We are giving districts some flexibility though. We have gotten rid of the standardized testing requirements. We have ensured that if they want to move to a balanced calendar, they have that ability to do that. We're going to need to work with the legislature to ensure that we've got additional um, uh, resources to support the unique challenges that schools are going to want to meet and are going to need to be devising at the local level. And so I think that that's, those are all factors that would go into you know, answering your question, but I think that um, working with the, the people on the ground who are the true experts in education of, of their student bodies is how we proceed and get the best result for our kids. Uh, we've had a lot of people on Facebook Live asking us about unemployment. We've heard that the hundreds of thousands of people have been applying for it, trying to get through the system, but they're either not getting a response or just having a hard time getting that benefit, those assistance that they've been needing as a result of COVID-19. Can you give us an update on if there's going to be any changes to the system, if there will be an unemployment task force, anything to support the people of Michigan who have been affected by this? Yeah, so each of these orders that I've issued, uh, you know, I've said it before, and I think it's, it, it's worth repeating, uh, they weigh heavily on me. I know that there are a lot of people who are unemployed and the anxiety that comes with, with that and trying to confront a state system that has been completely overwhelmed because there are so many people unemployed. It's not just here in Michigan, it's across the country. Our system's been able to, to stand up to the increased demand, but it does need additional support, and so we're working on that. In the interim, what we have done is release um, and uh, loosen some of the previously um, required actions on behalf of applicants. So it used to be that you'd have to get a certain documentation from your former employer to even be eligible. We've said we're gonna make it easier for people to apply. And so my encouragement for folks is that um, keep attempting to get that application in, but know that we understand the incredible um, strain on the system, the incredible number of people that are impacted, and we're gonna work to make sure that uh, people get the unemployment that they need to, to get through this crisis. We're seeing questions about um, mask and whether people should be wearing mask when they're out in public. There are places now that are starting to require mask. Is there any consideration about making such a requirement here in Michigan? I'm gonna hand that one to Dr. Kelby. Sure, so, so there's no question right now that our frontline hospital workers uh, don't have enough masks. So if there is an N95 mask or a surgical mask, we want it to go directly to our hospital partners. That said, we know that some people may have a mask at home or they may be able to make a mask out of cloth or a bandana. And if, if they want to do that and they can, it certainly, uh, it, they should strongly consider it. Uh, and it certainly won't, won't cause any harm. Has there been any consideration of a uh, curfew, a statewide curfew? Uh, we have not discussed a statewide curfew at this juncture. I will say that the exponential growth in COVID-19 is something that I am, we're all very concerned about. Um, we know that our hospital systems are at capacity in many parts of our state. We know that um, this great testing um, that is was set up in the city of Detroit has shown that there's a much higher prevalence of COVID-19, I think, than, um, than anyone anticipated. The more testing we do, the better. We see numbers go up and that is concerning for people, but the more testing we can do, the better handle we can get on how prevalent this is and make educated decisions. I know that the mayor of Flint went forward with a curfew this week. I, I know that that's being talked about at a variety of our um, sister states, but at this juncture, we've not had that conversation. Um, but we're anticipating and analyzing each of the actions that other areas are taking to be aggressive and to be on the forefront. And so um, I would anticipate at some point a conversation about that, but there's not been one yet and there's not a decision right now either. Uh, Dr. Keldun, we're still seeing uh, lots of people congregating in public spaces that are still open despite the uh, social distancing recommendations. Can you just reiterate the importance of continuing to social distance during this time and staying home if you can? Absolutely. So, so the question is, people are still congregating. That's, that's just 
absolutely uh, just unacceptable. This is so incredibly important that people stay home. No one is immune. You can be 25 years old, healthy, no medical problems. You can easily get the coronavirus, and you could potentially die. I need everyone to understand this is incredibly serious. Take it seriously. Stay home and, and stay safe. There are a number of students who have um, special needs that services that are provided through the schools, IEPs, et cetera. Can you talk a little bit about um, what you expect of districts yeah. to work with those students in the wide variety of services that they provide? Are there exemptions for delivery of those services? So uh, we recognize that there are a lot of students with um, special needs across Michigan and we want districts to support uh, students that, and their IEPs to the fullest extent that they are able. We recognize that there are unique challenges in a situation where you can't have you know, person to person contact and that that is something that um, is an issue. You know, if a student needs occupational therapy services, it, it may require that additional sessions will be needed after the state of emergency is over and we are mindful of that. Um, and when this executive order expires, that is something that I think we will continue to work on. Those services are not canceled. They may need to be delayed until we beat this virus, but we anticipate uh, living up to the IEPs that our, our students um, rely on and that our families rely on as well. Um, on the uh, school year, what other options, if any, did you uh, um, consider? I, I don't know that there are a lot of other great options. I think the question was how do we ensure that we're empowering districts to meet the challenges that they confront um, and make use of assets that they might have available. Um, I think the biggest challenge, Rick, is that with the disparate you know, educational system that we've had in Michigan, um, that there are very different challenges across our state. And it's not just flipping a switch and saying everyone can go online because broadband's just not available in areas. Not every child has access to a device. Um, not every school district has the ability to uh, devise and instruct an online course that meets the needs of the kids. And so that's why this really has to be um, in close partnership with the local leadership to ensure that each child has uh, access to the kind of distance learning that, that they're gonna need. All right, thank you, thank you everybody. Well, there you have it, Governor joining us, uh, the state of Michigan, a little late, but the governor did get with us today and answered a number of questions and cleared a number of things up. We are gonna connect with Dr. Jerry Hill of the West Bloomfield School District in a couple of minutes and state representative I know his name, Tyler. You can help Ryan me Ryan Berman. Ron, yes, Representative Berman will join us in a minute, too. Quick recap of what happened during the press conference. Uh, by the way, Dave Scott and Tyler Keefe at our Lakes FM studio on the Megacast. Uh, school closed for the rest of the year was the essence of what was said. Um, and uh, they also got away from the school conversation and said, we need more doctors. We need more facilities. There is a website that's been created, michigan.gov slash fight COVID-19. And if you are a doctor, a nurse, a health practitioner, and you can be of any assistance, uh, you are invited to go to that website and let's see what we can do to uh, to get your help. Governor talked about, uh, about uh, education, of course, for most of the press conference. And uh, she said that uh, it just wasn't safe for students to be in school over the next three, four, five, six weeks, and uh, school was canceled. Uh, she wanted to make sure that people knew that no student would be penalized. We've got a graduating senior. They will not be penalized. She said we need more testing in the state of Michigan, and she said it's too dangerous. The governor said at this juncture, it is too dangerous to have our kids in school. Some of the reporters at the end of the conference asked about unemployment, huge issue here in the state of Michigan. We have a ton of people that are unemployed, and I talked to a couple of people today right here in our service area that have not been able to get on the state's website and file for unemployment. Uh, Governor did recognize that the systems do need additional support. She urged people that are unemployed here in the state of Michigan to keep 
trying, and she understands the strain that it is being put uh, on all of us, and they're going to work to do the very best they can to get those systems functional. They have got some procedural things out of the way for folks that need to file unemployment. For example, you don't need to go to your former employer and get uh, paperwork from them. Nonetheless, you still got to be able to get onto the online system, and that is very difficult for folks. So we have a little more clarity. School year will be coming to an end here. We'll talk to the superintendent of schools, Dr. Jerry Hill, in just a couple of minutes. You are watching and listening to the Megacast. Lots of folks and stations with us all around Oakland County today. We want to thank you for watching and listening on Civic Center TV, Channel 15 and 19, and Channel 99, and online at civiccentertv.com. Uh, West Bloomfield Police Department, you got us on the Facebook page. Thank you very much. We're visible on a lot of other municipal sites around the area. And then our three radio stations, three, count them, three radio stations, 89.3 Lakes FM, 88.1 WBFH, The Biff, and today joining us for the first time and staying with us a huge thank you to avondale schools wahs 89.5 avondale community radio the mega cast continues in just a minute tyler we'll be right back hit a couple of buttons and we'll be with you in a moment have you had to choose between picking up a prescription or buying groceries paying your utility bill or insulating your attic you're not alone Every day, people across Michigan are faced with choices. Michigan Community Action is a network of agencies helping people achieve greater financial and personal independence through programs such as weatherization, food distribution, utility assistance, and Head Start preschools. The programs supported by Michigan Community Action benefit people all over the state. Maybe you've just lost your job and are having trouble making ends meet. Or maybe you're retired and Social Security isn't enough. Whatever your situation, we may be able to help. Visit michigancommunityaction.org or call 855-MI-ACTION to find out more. Helping people. Changing lives. Sponsored by Michigan Community Action and Michigan Broadcasters. All right, welcome back to the Megacast. Dave Scott, Tyler Keefe. Tyler was over in my part of the studio, so I got to get my wipes out and clean things off here before I get going and touch any of the buttons. Tyler, do you ever run into the situation where you grab the wipes and the whole thing? Co- I mean, what ha- look what happened here. This is this is a mess. You know, I, so I, I, I don't know what we're situ- going to do about that. I have had that situation. <laughs> I was uh, I was doing, running some errands recently for my dad, who is immunosuppressed, and uh I had my own wipes with them, and I, every time I went to go pull a wipe out, every other time I went to go pull a wipe out, the entire package would come right. back Well, we're, we're keeping the place clean. I know Dr. Hill, the superintendent of West Bloomfield Schools, is doing the same over there. It's, it's not easy to keep everything clean and on the up and up, Dr. Hill. Uh, no, that's a constant challenge. <laughs> it is. Thank you for joining us. I assume you heard the governor uh, and uh, her press conference that just ended. School closed for the rest of the year. Your thoughts, sir? Uh, well, yes, it's a, it was a historic uh, press conference, uh, to say the least. Um, we fully support uh, the governor in what she's doing. Uh, we think it's for the, the priority of safety of all the Michiganders. And uh, as a school district, uh, we're charged with the, the safety and welfare of young people and, and their families. And so we understand the governor's orders. We appreciate it. Uh, this order in particular, it's 17 pages long. Uh, and there are a lot of details in it, and we appreciate that that guidance that's coming from uh, the governor and I assume the Michigan Department of Education. Yeah, I, it still sounded though there was a little bit of room for interpretation and in how this is going to get uh, implemented in school district to school district because uh, you all operate in a similar fashion, but there certainly are differences. Well, sure, with over 900 school districts in Oakland County alone, we have 28 school districts and. And not, not two of us are alike. And so we all have different contexts. We all have different resources. Uh, we all have different challenges. We all have the same goal, and that's educating uh, students, providing for their, their mental health and well-being. And, and uh, really, what we need to do and what we will do in the state and in Oakland County is, is pull together and work as a team on this and, and share ideas and best practices. And we will navigate uh, these times, and, and we'll get through Fine. Our, our focus in West Bloomfield and across the state really is what's best for students during these times, uh, what's best for families, how can we do this in an equitable manner, 
in, in, a, in a sane manner. And I, I appreciate a lot of the elements that I've read in the executive order that relate to those uh, concerns. Dr. Jerry Hill of West Bloomfield joining us right down the megacast. We've also had a good opportunity to talk to Ken Gutman, who I know you uh, dialogue with in Walled Lake. Uh, Pat Watson, former principal in West Bloomfield, now the superintendent at uh, Bloomfield Hills. And uh, we're going to be talking with Dr. Jim Schwartz tomorrow in Avondale. Uh, we really appreciate them, including their radio station which we are on now as well. Uh, Dr. Hill, this is coming together well from an information standpoint, and we're, we're happy to be here. Governor today said that no student will be penalized as this is implemented, and I'm sure there are a lot of parents and students, especially seniors, heading off to college and off to careers that are concerned about how this may affect them. Uh, oh, for sure, uh, particularly seniors. They're, they're in a transition uh, this is normally a time for celebration, uh, doing the final preparations, making sure everything's in line. And so I really support the, the no penalty concept. We're here to help students. We're he here to help them learn and, and navigate these times. And so we will be working with our students. We'll be looking at our uh, particular graduation requirements as an example and make sure that they are appropriate for uh, and in, in alignment with the order. Uh, but really the, the mental health and the well-being of our students is utmost in our minds. And I know that our high school team will be working with counselors, administrators, teachers. We'll be working with all of our seniors in particular, but all the students as we uh, make sure that we are doing what's right uh, in these circumstances. Well, I'm, I'm sure, did you just get the order today? Uh, have you had it for a little while or are you just getting your hands on it right now? Uh, got it at 9, 16. Um, <laughs> So you, <laughs> there was a press. I imagine, <laughs> was a press I, I imagine you've not had an opportunity to read all seventeen pages. Uh, there you uh, go. You no, got, you got it right there. Been, go ahead. Yeah, we've we've been working on it. Um, but the interesting thing is because we have uh, a fairly extensive cloud learning initiative plan in place. Um, by the first blush, we can take our plan and 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 tweak it. And and actually, we've shared our plans with with other school districts in, in Oakland County and with MDE. And so we feel fairly confident that, that the cloud uh, learning initiative that we've developed uh, will meet most of the elements of the plan. And, and I think with the guidance that's in the plan, we'll be able to improve what we're doing. Do you, see, do you see a future that maybe as we go to more of a cloud environment and then possibly could be doing some more of that in the future, that uh, that school districts will be able to liaison, work to be work together a little bit more, cooperate a little bit more, uh, seeing as a lot of this is going online. Uh, I, I think so. We have 56 ISDs in the state of Michigan. Uh, Oakland Schools is one of those 56. In our in our ISD, we have 28 school districts. We meet on a regular basis, uh, monthly, bi-monthly, and, and we are always trying to. Uh, make sure that we're in alignment with an, one another. The big challenge, quite frankly, is one of equity, equity across systems, equity across the state. I think we need to take a real deep look at uh, the, the funding formula and have it be more equitable rather than equal, if that makes sense. Uh, there are some situations where, and I'll just take this current crisis, uh, broadband internet accessibility is not consistent across our across our state for educational reasons alone it should be and so that's one thing that we could be working on as an equity issue and there are a host of other uh items related to poverty that that we need to deal with uh, in oakland county we have uh, some school districts where 40 percent of the families do not have internet connection in west bloomfield we have 30 percent of our students on free and reduced lunch and, and a lot of those homes did not do not have internet access that we've had to figure out how to provide hotspots to. So there's a whole host of ways and reasons that we need to be collaborating across uh, not only Oakland County, but across the state as well. All right. So uh, thank you so much for Dr. Hill. I, I appreciate you being with us today. We're going to continue this dialogue. I, I, I have learned so much and I'm so impressed with uh, what the schools are doing here in our region. I had no idea. I mean, it's just really amazing what you and your colleagues across our region have been able to put together. Again, tomorrow we're going to talk to uh, Dr. Jim Schwartz. I assume you've had communications with him in the past. I see you nodding your head. Uh, Ken Gutman's had some really good information for us as well. Uh, Pat 
Watson in Bloomfield Hills. We'll talk to all of you. And I don't know, maybe we could set up a Zoom uh, call before this is all over, get all of you on, and, and maybe do an education day and uh, just chat back and forth and, and uh, share some ideas with our uh, with our viewers. But uh, you guys are all doing a great job, and I appreciate your help. Uh, so is school, like, over online, too, or is it going to continue for a while and then start up at the same time, or do we just not know yet? Uh, here, here's, what, here's what I know. Uh, the school buildings are, are closed, but learning in the West Bloomfield School District is not shut down. We will continue Monday. This is spring break for us, uh, so we haven't, we've been not online this week, but starting Monday morning, we have our lessons planned. Teachers met the Friday before spring break. Uh, they planned out lessons for the next uh, three to six weeks, and so we are ready to continue with what we've been doing the last two weeks, and we will start that up again on Monday. We'll be getting communications out to our families to that effect so that they're aware and our teachers are, are ready to go. So for, for us, it's educating in a different manner, but we will continue that process beginning Monday. All right, Dr. Hill. Thank you very much. I know you're very busy. You've got you've got you have homework to do. Read all 17 pages. That's your assignment. I always wanted to give a homework assignment to a principal or a superintendent. So you have satisfied one of my lifelong dreams. We've got our work cut out for us. Thank I know you. you're going to do a great job. Thank you very much. He is the superintendent of schools in West Bloomfield, uh, Dr. Hill. Thank you very much. Tomorrow, Jim Schwartz checks in here on the show from Avondale, and we really appreciate all the superintendents getting involved. We are going to talk to State Representative Ryan Berman. It sounded like the governor, I don't want to get in a big political thing, it's not what we do here, but it sounded like the governor took a little bit of a shot at the legislature a moment ago, saying she didn't really want him to come in session. So we'll hear from uh, Representative Berman, get his thoughts on that, and just see uh, how we are cooperating and working together. I know we are. I know that's going on. I don't want to have anyone pick a fight on our show we want to we want to find a solution but we're going to talk to him in just a couple of minutes we'll take a break we'll be back in literally 30 seconds we just got to hit a couple of buttons and i gotta have a sip of my coffee dave scott tyler keith this is the mega cast on civic center tv on civiccentertv.com we're on the facebook page of the west bloomfield police department we're on township and municipal sites all over the place and now not one not two but three fantastic community radio stations 89.3 lakes fm 88.1 88.1 WBFH, the Biff, and a WAHS 89.5 Avondale Community Radio. The Megacast continues in just a moment. To buy your home, you became a house hunting ace. Learned about loans, scoured neighborhoods, and asked the right questions. Now you're queen of your castle. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll feel empowered to own your retirement like you own your home. Go to aceyourretirement.org. Because when it comes to clearing financial hurdles, you're an ace. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Megacast. A huge thank you to all of our radio stations. I, I, Logan is a junior at Avondale High School, and uh, I think he knows how to run the radio station better than anybody over there. It kind of was that way when we were in high school, too. He got us on the air at WAHS 89.5. Avondale Community Radio. Thanks to Ron at 88.1 WBFH, the Biff, for getting us on the air. We were able to figure out how to make all these buttons work here, Tyler. Somehow, I don't exactly know. Thank you for joining us across the Megacast. Patiently waiting on Zoom is State Representative Ryan Berman of the 39th District. Uh, Representative Berman, it looks like you you got to figure it out over there. You're looking good on Zoom today, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining us. So I assume you had an opportunity to uh, listen to the governor speak over the last half hour or so. you have any thoughts? Yeah, besides, unfortunately, you're breaking up a little bit. Uh, I was able to watch the governor's uh, press conference, um, although did have a, a little bit of a heads up on what it was uh, going to be all about. Uh, that doesn't mean necessarily what ends up the message being conveyed to the public or through the news outlets, you know, gets there. I, I saw your interview with Dr. Hill and, you know, some of your questions about how this is going to affect uh, the, the schools and the rest of the school year. And, 
you know, some things that sometimes just don't get stressed, you know, with this whole situation is, is some of those little points or even big points of that this only is stopping in-person schooling for now until the governor deems it safe to, to return. And, you know, it's my understanding that if it's not happening by mid-May, it's probably not going to happen. Um, it may not happen at, at, at this point, it, but learning will go on. Uh, it's the intent that the districts do uh, put together their own plans for distance learning. And whether that's online, and I know there are broadband issues, online issues for a lot of our rural parts of the state. Uh, but as Dr. Hill said, you know, West Bloomfield and the West Bloomfield School District has been doing a phenomenal job of their online and distance learning instruction. And they really are a model for the rest of the school districts out there. And then if you were paying attention to the governor, uh, and then a lot of people don't know, we have 900, over 950, I think it is, separate school districts in our state. Um, so what her order also does is saying that school districts, the ones that maybe aren't as well funded or prepared as West Bloomfield, can uh, come into an agreement with the other ones that do have it in place. And I think West Bloomfield, again, can serve as a model for these others and help. And I think they have been helping uh, other districts uh, around our region uh, implement their own uh, uh, online and distance learning initiatives. Do you see then a situation where, and we're, we're talking to all of our superintendents, and, and Dr. Hill is with us today, but I mean, we're going to talk to Jim Schwartz tomorrow in Avondale. We've been talking to uh, Ken Gutman. We've been talking to Pat Watson. Uh, they, oh, they're all doing an amazing job. No question about it. And and I really appreciate you coming on the show and just calling it the way it is. This is what this show is about. Where, you know, there's no politics here. We just, we need to know. The public needs to know the straight deal. We need to understand what's going on, and it's it's easy when we get together in a smaller community environment like this to be able to hash it all out and figure it out. But it, it sounds to me, uh, Representative Berman, that you're thinking that maybe some of our school districts need to partner a little bit, uh, help each other out. So if we have a uh, an affluent district, and then we have another district that is not as affluent, does not have all the same resources, maybe they can uh, help each other out. And over the cloud, we can get some of the resources to, to students that might not otherwise have the opportunity to access them. Is that what you're suggesting? No, absolutely. And it's not just about the discrepancy of, of funding between districts. It's also the forward thinking or technology driven districts. Some are, and maybe it was uh, through institutional or philosophy of whether their districts wanted to adopt these measures or were technology or forward thinking. I know here in the uh, in, in my district, besides West Bloomfield, Wall Lake, and you mentioned uh, Superintendent Gutman, they've been uh, doing a phenomenal job. And, and ever since back in the day when I was in Wall Lake schools, we had uh, first ones to have Apple computers and keeping up with that technology and keeping up with the curve. They've always been ahead of the curve and Wald Lake is doing a phenomenal job. My daughters are in middle school now in the district and they're on uh, different platforms and Google classrooms and every day they are in a routine and they're getting up and they have to turn in their assignments, do their stuff. So, so they're working. Um, and, and we're fortunate that we do have the broadband. We do have the computers and capacity for those students, not that don't have maybe some of those resources. Uh, I know Wall Lake schools has been, uh, providing Chromebooks and different days that the, these uh, students and families can pick them up to use them. Uh, but like the governor said in, in her press conference as well, it's not just about broadband. It's not just about that technology, but even uh, packets, you know, having those worksheets that they would have to complete for people that don't, let's say, have that technology. Most everybody has a cell phone and cell service throughout our state. Uh, I know my daughters can do and access the same material over a cell phone that they can on their laptop. So it's using that and, and that's part of the governor's uh, directives of, of saying whatever you have in your district to use to get that information out there to keep helping these children learn, that's what you, these districts should be doing. 
And if it's partnering up where they do have that technology or they do have the infrastructure to do a more technologically advanced learning environment, but if they don't necessarily have the lesson plans or a curriculum set up, instead of reinventing that wheel, to, to lean on the, the neighboring districts or other districts and states who have been doing it, who have been maybe doing a pilot project or program or been doing it a little bit longer to, to see, you know, the best, best practices in that uh, area. Yeah, well said. Representative Ryan Berman joining us today in the Megacast. We think we're, we're setting a little example here as well in our own little media space, taking advantage of these student radio stations across our coverage area. And I really want to salute the school districts that have partnered up with us to take these radio stations. Students are out of school right now. Take these radio stations and use them to communicate this vital information to our local communities. We're all working together. And and, you know, this is just what you have to do. This is what you have to do during a challenging time like this. Work together, figure it out, get through a solution. But aren't we lucky? You know, I've been talking about this with others and thinking, if this had happened, this coronavirus uh, crisis had happened uh, even five years ago, it would have been so much more difficult. The technology that we have at this moment, at this time, has facilitated a lot of what's going on in these school districts right now. No, absolutely. And, you know, you have uh, how prevalent media is and technology and in use in our daily lives. Um, you know, even uh, a joke or meme conspiracy theorist say, oh, it, Zoom must be behind the coronavirus. If you look, I mean, I'm on Zoom right now speaking with you guys, uh, and I get, think their valuation of their company is uh, now – I think it was 40 billion, yeah. just uh, as much as Uber. But look at that. And we have that technology. We have Uber, you know, to help with our public transit. We have these different type of Uber Eats and Shipped and uh, Instacarts that you can stay at home to stay safe and have deliveries come to you. You know, Amazon and and how big it's they've become in their, you know, prime shipping and, and now with all the the surge and and demand on it you know all right it's not one day or two day shipping maybe it's a one week shipping for for something but still imagine that in the past no matter what you want you can go online and get in and it just comes to your door it's simply incredible and technology is incredible one area we are having a hard time right now and i've talked to several people just today right here in our communities Representative Berman, that uh, have unfortunately become unemployed and they're trying to file for their unemployment benefits, and it's very difficult. The website is backed up. Governor admitted it today, and no surprise. I mean, the numbers are overwhelming, mm-hmm. and it's been it's been difficult to access resources. Governor says uh, today, keep trying. Uh, we're going to keep looking at the systems. Are we doing everything we can to make sure that the uh, unemployment systems statewide are robust enough to take care of this, or is there other other action that we need to take? You know, I'm, I'm not so sure, uh, you know, that's not in, in my area and, and her executive departments and what their typical bandwidth is. I just know that, um, you know, with everybody staying at home or not being at work and having more bandwidth, even the children from school and whether it's streaming classes, streaming the Zoom video, streaming Netflix, you know, there's going to be a more demand on our system and on the infrastructure. And uh, luckily, a lot of companies and, and Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, and they've been expanding and in, in whatever they're doing on their back end to help with the, the more demand on the infrastructure. Uh, it's happened to me with these dial in meetings, go to meetings. I, I couldn't even get on one of our uh, mm-hmm. legislative meetings uh, over the phone. I ended up having to call a colleague and he merged me in on his call because he was able to get through. So there's obviously just on, on everything, a lot of more demand on, on our infrastructure right now and our, the bandwidth. Um, but that doesn't mean that you won't be able to get through or, or eventually being mm-hmm. able to. To, to get in. I know uh, I saw an update with the uh, unemployment system saying, try to call it or get on there between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. You know, that's the, the downtime. 
Yeah, no, that's so, a good I idea, mean, and I've done the same thing on some of the federal sites lately. By the way, you know, listen, for the most part, it's working. We we do everything over the Internet. We've been doing all of our interviews. Yeah, they break up a little bit, but we can see you great. We've got 99.9% of everything you're saying, and we're we're dealing with it. I, I salute the infrastructure providers that we have here, and, you know, no one, no one expected all of us to be home 24-7, so uh, they're doing a pretty good job. Representative Berman, we got to scoot along. Uh, any okay. final thoughts anything that you have that you think might be particularly helpful for our local people in and surrounding your district especially anything they may not be aware of uh you know i i think the uh you know the governor has been doing a pretty good job of uh going on tv and uh, uh saying everything and, and updating i think we've been having good uh, conversations and getting information out there uh, here in Oakland County specifically of the numbers and where we're at uh, with with there's a lot of information out there about COVID-19. Uh, you can always and if anybody in, in has a question whether in my district or not can always contact my office uh, can go to my webpage rep 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 and you can email Ryan Berman at house.mi.gov or call my office at 517-373-1799. Yeah, We're thank- here to uh, help and, and do what we can. I, I thank you. And, I, and I'm sure your colleagues all across the state of Michigan um, and, and the representatives who service the neighboring communities that are also listening today, uh, very similar situation. When I've had trouble in the past and I needed to get some help, uh, with something going on in the state, first thing I do, I call my state representative, and I've always been impressed. We we appreciate when you come by the TV studios and interact with us, and I've always been impressed with the follow-up. So thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. We'll keep in touch. Uh, you healthy? Yeah. Everyone in your family doing okay? Everything, everybody's doing great. Okay. So thank you, and thanks for having me. All right. Very good. Thank Stay you, sir. Safe, you right, too, you. State Representative Berman, Ryan Berman, joining us here on the Megacast today. Dave Scott, Tyler Keefe in our studios. We only got a couple of minutes, Tyler. So, uh, wow, quite a day. And uh, we hear from the governor. School is closed. We heard from Dr. Hill in West Bloomfield. We'll hear from Dr. Schwartz tomorrow in uh, in Avondale and uh, find out exactly how this whole thing is going to go down and, and what's going to be happening in more detail. 17-page order from the governor. Uh, she said that... Uh, Students are not going to be negatively impacted to the extent possible through this. That's not a direct quote. She also said that we need more testing, too, in the state of Michigan. And as our numbers continue to rise, Tyler, uh, no question, away from the education picture for a second, um, that's something we got to work on. Our numbers are growing dramatically, and we need to have, I think, a, a good understanding of where this thing is going. Innovation across the board is going to be key during this uh of course, with the schools, as was discussed with Representative Berman and with uh, Dr. Hill, helping each other out. And then it's the same thing, innovation and collaboration between the populations of our county, of the state, and of the country to make sure that we're moving the needle forward to make sure that we're flattening the curve because otherwise this is going to continue to go on for a very long time. Okay, a couple other points of interest before we go. I apologize. We did not get to the carryout club today. Needed a little extra time to get the governor on the air. That was more important. We'll talk about all the amazing restaurants in our service area tomorrow, but needless to say, go to civiccentertv.com. Hit the carryout club link. It's right there if you're watching right now, and there are a number of restaurants you can go to in there. They're all over open and available for you, and you'll be supporting our local businesses. Don't forget, Sheriff Mike Bouchard, Oakland County Sheriff, has a call this afternoon at 4.30. This is a new deal, and I've never seen anything like this before. It's going to work like a robocall. So the call will go out, your phone rings at 4.30, pick it up, and uh, you will be participating in a live, not a recorded, but I understand it to be a live conference call. Uh, Sheriff Bouchard will talk about issues specific to our communities, and it should be very informative. We're going to do what we can. we got to work on this. But, Tyler, I think we're going to try to get that on the radio and TV if we can. Yeah, if, if we are able to broadcast that, uh, if we have the permissions from the county sheriff's office and we work uh, out technically how we're going to do that, we will do our best 
to have that on the radio station this afternoon at 4.30. And then don't forget tonight, all of our TV stations in Metro Detroit coming together uh, to do a broadcast tonight, a town hall again with the governor, 7 o'clock. It'll be on every TV station. Good local information that uh, we hope you will find useful. All right, well, that's it for the Megacast. I think I'm running right about on time. We want to thank everybody. Huge thank you to our Facebook partners today, West Bloomfield Police Department, for putting us on Facebook Live. We want to thank everybody, uh, our team, about 10 people working on the show, doing a really, really good job. Uh, thank you very much to our crew, and a big thank you to our radio stations who have been broadcasting the show today and will continue for the uh, next several days. So archives all day long at civiccentertv.com, civiccentertv.com. TV.com. Go to the coronavirus megacast and carry out club links, and you'll find a lot of useful information there. So, uh, for Tyler Keefe and the whole crew, thank you very much for tuning in to Civic Center TV and our wonderful radio stations. Of course, WAHS 89.5. Avondale Community Radio. Logan and the crew out there, thank you so much. And again, we'll be talking to Superintendent Schwartz from your community tomorrow. 88.1 WBFH, the Biff. Ron, thank you and your whole crew there. And of course, a huge thank you to the entire team right here at 89.3 WBLD, 89.3 Lakes FM. That is the Megacast for today. Thank you very much for tuning in.